five gold medals. They had five in the finals. The United States won four gold medals out of six. Cuba, uh, Puerto Rico, two out of six. But those two gold medals are the first ever won by Puerto Rico in Pan American Games history. More coverage coming up in just a moment. Darts may be the kind of game you like to play in a local pub, but over in England, they're quite serious about it, and that's one of the features we'll have for a special Sunday edition of the CBS Sports Spectacular a week from today from 4 to 6 p.m. We'll have a dart championship, and as I said earlier, a little bit for everyone. We will also have Mr. Universe contest, the skateboard, tractor pulling, and we'll continue with the final part of our motorcycle racing championships as we host both of our CBS Sports Spectacular shows from England next Saturday and Sunday. Well, in Pan Am Yachting, the United States, with six medals, won the overall competition. Three of the six were gold. Canada and Brazil each won gold medals apiece. Our gal Jane Kennedy had to enjoy our, her day on the boat. Well, Dick, I think I've got one up on everybody this time. I am nowhere near San Juan. As a matter of fact, I am off the island of Puerto Rico altogether. We're south of the island, just outside of Poincy, on a boat called the Marlin. And we came out here to take a look at one of the most beautiful events of any game competition, yachting. different from what you've been seeing, but about 90 miles from San Juan and five miles at sea, the competition can be just as tough. Jane, that looks mighty refreshing, believe me. David Curtis of Marblehead, Massachusetts, Steve Cochero of Beverly, Mass, and Mark Reynolds of Miami, Florida, all won gold medals in yachting. We'll be back with more in just a moment. As we approach the end of the 8th Pan American Games here in San Juan, it is time to reflect on the past two weeks. For his observations on the international competition here, here is Emmy Award-winning commentator Jack Whitaker. At the Pan American Games in Mexico City in 1975, Silvio Leonard sprang out of the starting blocks, won the 100 meters easily, and disappeared 15 feet into a pit at the edge of the stadium. Thus did Cuba announce her challenge to the United States supremacy in sports in the Western Hemisphere. Here at the Pan American Games in San Juan, Puerto Rico in 1979, Silvio Leonard still won the 100 meters, but the United States was more than equal to other Cuban challengers. Our swimmers, as you know, overwhelmed everyone. Even our young girl gymnasts were a pleasant surprise. All this is by way of saying that the United States sent the best athletes they had, a strongest team perhaps ever to these Pan American Games, and that augurs well for Moscow in 1980. This is especially true in the area of team sports, sports like our basketball. This Pan American basketball team will be the nucleus of the team we will send to Moscow, and their experience here in San Juan will prove to be invaluable. But aside from those invaluable experiences, are these games really necessary every four years, the time, the expense, the effort, to get the emotional and political aggravation they seem to evoke? Well, there are times when I see an American flag being burned or hear the strident, shrill boos being heaped down on our American athletes when I say, why do we do this? Why are we here? Why are we spending all this time and money on this? But then as the games progress, you realize that those unpleasant incidences, incidents are just isolated affairs, and what really counts is the competition and the athletes moving among themselves. We should all be very proud of the American team here in San Juan these past few weeks, 
Not only did they perform well on the field, but they performed with a quiet dignity that was a joy to behold. They remain still one of our finest exports. Indeed, we should be proud of every athlete who competed here in these Pan American Games for 1979 because they keep alive the hope, however feeble, that people still perhaps can build better bridges than governments. Thank you, Jack. Well, now we're going to take a look at some of those sports you don't often see in coverage of Olympics or Pan American Games, and we hope you get a glimpse of some of the other things that happened during the past two weeks. For example, in water polo, the United States lost the gold medal in 75 to host Mexico this year, and their white caps regained the gold, beating Cuba 8-6 to six in the championship game. Gary Figueroa, 22, from Newport, California, scored five of the eight goals in the championship game. Cuba took the bronze. U.S. women won a gold medal in softball. In the championship game, Barbara Rinaldi of Chino, California, pitched a one-hitter in defeating Puerto Rico 2 to nothing. Along the way, 20-year-old Kathy Arnitson of Zeeland, Michigan, who was the big stopper, hurling two no-hitters, including a perfect game, was the big hero. Puerto Rico was the silver medalist winner, and Little Belize won the bronze. U.S. girls 13-1. In baseball, Cuba made it 25 straight in Pan Am competition. Another gold medal. Here's a three-run homer to spark Cuba to an easy win over Puerto Rico. The Dominican Republic took the silver, Puerto Rico the bronze, and their manager said, let's bring on the Yankees. I don't know why they're in fourth place. And in cycling, the U.S. picked up only one medal, but it was a gold. They shocked the field in the 100-kilometer team road race. Cuba had the most medals with six, but only one gold. Canada led in gold medals with three for a total of four. George Mount, Tom Doughty, Tom Sane, and Wayne Sestina were the heroes for the United States. So the overall medal picture, the United States won 118 gold in Mexico City, 126 this time. Their total in Mexico, 246, 264 this time, so they exceeded the output four years ago. Cuba was second, Canada was third, Brazil fourth, Puerto Rico won their two medals in boxing. And of course, that's gold medals we mean. Well, as we have done on all of our weekend shows, we have practically capped our program with a tribute to U.S. gold medal winners. And so here is our final tribute today. I mean, of course, the entire CBS Sports crew, the commentators, production staff, technicians, and the invaluable people behind the scenes, most of whom labored through most of all night to put the 12-plus hours on the air. But that's our job, and we think it was well worth it. So from all of us here in San Juan, this is Dick Stockton saying so long for the eighth Pan American Games. The executive producer of the Pan American Games is Eddie Einhorn. Coordinating producer, Ed Gorin.
Y no sabes 